This is Tim from the About Anything channel. In a previous video, I rebutted the top 15 cited reasons for not going on a cruise. So if you haven't watched that video, click on the clip here or find the link in the description. Then come back and see this one. If you've already seen part one, welcome back. I've come across more reasons to rebut. Actually, some of these really sound like reasons to go on a cruise, but they're presented online as reasons not to go on a cruise. So without further ado, here is part two. The first additional complaint is there's way too much food available. True. Personally, I see this as a reason to go on a cruise for, say, a land vacation. While some food options are limited during the overnight hours, there's always some food of some kind available 24 hours. During normal hours, food choices are plentiful. Even at the buffet, there are multiple stations serving many types of foods. So you can always find something that's piquing your interest, whether it be burgers, hot dogs, pizza, Mexican food, Asian food, deli food, pasta, salads, fruits. You should be able to find something to eat. While there are extra costs for some food options like the specialty restaurants, there are plenty free options that keep you filled for the entire journey. In my 20 cruises, I believe I paid for extra food just twice. Not because I don't believe that's a good deal to eat at extra cost places, but rather I do tend to be a cost-minded cruiser and the free options are more than enough. The second additional reason for not going on a cruise also goes along with the topic of food. The food is unhealthy and there's way too much alcohol on board. Well, again, I believe most people find this a reason to go on a cruise. Like I've stated earlier in the video, there are many food options aboard. And yes, some of them may not be healthy choices, but hey, you're on vacation. Just like a land vacation, unhealthy choices are all around. Now, with that being said, if you're still looking to eat healthy on a cruise, well, good for you. There are healthy options available on board. Honestly, I can't tell you what they are because I don't gravitate to that section. But I know at dinner, they mark the more healthy menu choices with a symbol so you're aware of the healthier choices. As for alcohol, yes, there will be alcohol available. This is actually how cruise lines make most of their money. So if you don't like being around people who are taking part in the drinking on their vacation, a cruise may not be for you. Then again, I'm not really sure where you would go aside from, say, maybe Disney if you don't want to be around people who are drinking. You definitely don't want to go to Las Vegas as drinks are given to you at the slot machines. And you surely don't want to go to a sporting event because fan drinking is almost part of the pastime. No one is forcing you to buy alcohol. I don't. I get the soda package. Thus, I have unhealthy soda all week instead. And at least those who are enjoying drinks, maybe just a little bit too much, they're not driving home. But this criticism is more about your own willpower than the cruise itself. If not going off the healthy wagon has to be part of your vacation, you can still go on a cruise, but you'll have to have the willpower as unhealthy options are available for the rest of us folks who are letting our hair down during the week. The next topic is mechanical failures. Well, this does happen. Yes, there has been a couple of famous examples famous newsworthy examples where the ship experienced a major issue and has caused the ship to become almost inoperable. In part one, I made a reference to what I called the Carnival Poop Cruise. I believe I should explain this further for those who may not have the background of that reference. Due to a fire on board the ship, and by the way, a fire on the ship is the most dangerous situation so cruise lines are very cautious when it comes to smokers and to what items to bring on board. So please review the list of prohibited items before going on a cruise. Anyway, back to the carnival issue. The fire caused an issue with the power to the ship. Without power, the ship struggled to move and had to wait for a tugboat to bring him back to the mainland. Unfortunately, the ship wasn't close enough to land at the time of the fire, so this caused the cruise to be extended by days. But the most newsworthy part of the incident is the sewer system wasn't working and it caused toilets to back up. Well, since it was days to get back to land, you can see how this become a problem. It had to suck to be them. 
but this is like a one in a million chance that events like this will happen again. Granted, power outages and fires happen on land, but obviously on land it's much easier to escape the situation. But there have been disasters and tragic events that happened during other vacations, and yet hasn't been cited as a reason not to go on those vacations. A fourth additional reason not to go on the cruise is that you might miss the ship and it won't wait for you. My reply to that is, why would it? If you miss checking in for a plane, does it wait for you? If you miss the start of a ball game, does the game wait for you? No. So why would it surprise anyone that a ship filled with 3,000 passengers who got back on time wouldn't want to wait for the latecomers? Actually, watching what is called dock runners is a normal pastime of cruisers. Folks go to the top deck and cheer those running for the ship. When you get to a port, you're told multiple times and in multiple ways what time to be back on board. They actually tell you a time a half hour in advance. So these folks who miss the ships are actually more than a half hour late. And most of the time, the ship does actually wait for these people, but it won't wait long. Ships pay to use the docks, so they can't overstay their time slot. And sometimes the travel to the next port requires enough time not to have to go at top speed in order to give a more comfortable ride for all passengers. If you want to be entertained, search Dock Runners on YouTube. It's kind of entertaining. The fifth reason is one of my favorites. The critique is cruising feels like you're being trapped in a floating mall. When booking a cruise, I highly advise you to review the published itinerary. You will see how many days are what's called sea days, days in which the ship is between ports and is sailing throughout the day. On most seven night cruises, you'll have two or maybe three sea days. The other days you'll be at port. So you're only trapped on those days. Now let's talk about being trapped in this mall. Unless you're being trapped in the Mall of America, I don't think you can compare the activities available on a cruise ship to a mall. There's so much more to do aboard a ship if you want to. I actually like to relax and nap on a cruise. I know I'm kind of weird, but I enjoy the fact that I'm not working, just relaxing. As I stated in part one, many folks on sea days take to the pool area for sun and swim. This will get crowded, but that's not the only thing to do on board during the day. Each day of the cruise, even on port days, the cruise line will provide a list of scheduled events. They might be game shows, bingo, dance lessons, shows, karaoke, live music, movies out on the big screen. Of course, every scheduled event won't appeal to you, but it appears to others. There's also the spa that can be visited for those willing to pay extra for that. But nowadays, as new ships get built, they're adding activities or venues to outdo the last ship that was built. For example, some Norwegian ships now have go-karts. Both Royal Caribbean and Norwegian have large dry slides. Royal has their flow rider where you can surf and Royal now has bumper cars as well. Some Royal Caribbean ships have skydiving simulators. Carnival has a roller coaster. Norwegian has ships with a rope course. Royal has their sightseeing North Star, which is an extra cost on sea days, but is free in port. Carnival has a sky ride. Most cruise lines have an awesome water slide and kid zones. Royal Caribbean has their zip lines that go across the entire ship on deck 16. There's also ice skating along with professional ice shows on Royal ships. Not to mention some technology novelties like Royal Caribbean's rising tide bars. So yes, I guess you're trapped but your ship has plenty to do to keep you entertained, if you want to be entertained. The sixth additional reason for not going on a cruise is bed bugs. I'm surprised to see this one show up on the list. The reason I'm surprised is because your room is clean twice a day. Is your room at home clean twice a day? And you see the room attendants working on your neighbor's room as you go by and you always see a pile of sheets as they have just changed them. Now on a land hotel, I can't say I see that. I would say the level of cleanliness of a cruise is even better than a land hotel. Remember, the cabin attendant is working towards a tip and they meet you face to face during the course of the week. 
so they're going to do their best to keep you happy. On a land hotel, you could be there for five days and have no clue who's been taking care of your room. The last and seventh additional reason not to go on a cruise is that ships excursions are expensive. Well, yes, tours are expensive. But you can look at any tour site for any location, you'll see prices are pretty high right now. I know if you keep researching, you'll find a lower price for a similar excursion that the cruise line is offering. But there are a couple of reasons for this, and they're mostly for peace of mind. The first thing is cruise lines work with tour vendors to make sure they're on the up and up. When you're in a foreign port, it may not be the best option just to get in any car. Secondly, as I said earlier in this video, that the ship will not wait for you. One caveat of this is if a ship's tour does not get back in time, say the tour bus breaks down, the ship will wait for you as much as it possibly can. They will even pay the extra port fees while they wait. Now, if schedule becomes an issue, meaning they need to get to the next port, they will eventually have to leave. But it will be the cruise line that will reimburse you and safely house you for the night and arrange a transportation to the next port of call for you to catch the ship. This will be only the ship's responsibility if you take a ship's tour. So yes, they tend to be more expensive. Another thing is the median locations of tours. Typically on a cruise tour from the ship, it's right at the port. If you get a non-ship tour, you may need to walk to a meeting spot far away from the ship. So this concludes part two. Did I miss any reason not to go on a cruise? If so, please let me know in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this follow up rebuttal video. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching the About Anything channel.